I'm Jean Marie Heron, Certified Professional Organizer. Welcome to Posse, productivity and organizing solutions serving everyone in your home, your home office, or virtual. If you want to see my organizing and productivity classes and videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Welcome to today's Posse's Pen. It's paper and digital detox for any kind of home. So my name is Jean Marie Heron and I'm a certified professional organizer. I run a company called Posse Partners and we aim to take the stress and anxiety out of both living and working in cluttered and non-functional spaces and replace the disorganization with systems and solutions that work well for each individual. So today is our monthly Posse's Pen Zoom call. It is being recorded and my assistant Deborah is on the call. So as people jump on, I ask that you stay muted and if you have any questions you can put them in the chat box. So thank you for coming today or if you're listening to the recording. Okay so today is all about what I call the paper and digital detox diet and in my 16 years of organizing I feel very strongly that there's really only two things that we all need to do to deal with the onslaught of both paper and digital information. And it's going to sound very simple when I tell you, but the reality is a lot of people are not doing these two things. So if you do these two things, what's going to happen is your clutter will disappear. So these two things are, number one, you must have a dedicated time to handle all of your paper and digital processing. It will not get done if you don't set aside a dedicated time. And number two is during this dedicated processing time, you have to make decisions. So there's a lot of people who set aside time to clear their desk, file their papers, you know, delete a whole bunch of emails in their email box, but then they get stymied because they can't make decisions. So, Two things you need to do to deal with your detox is have an assigned time and make decisions because really great organizing is all about good habits and it's a choice. So, you know, it's a choice whether or not you decide to put on your calendar time to clear your desk. It's a choice whether or not you decide you're going to read that, you know, insurance policy. So, Whatever we do in life, we're choosing. So if, if you are feeling bogged down by paper and digital clutter, realize or recognize that you actually have control. So you can choose to make the time to get it done and also during that time slot to make decisions to process everything the way you wanna process it. All right, so talking about time, because I said that's the number one thing you need to do in order to process your paper and your digital information is I like to call this time boxing. It's the same thing as time blocking, time mapping. Um, I know uh, I was talking to Deb a few minutes ago about Julie Morgenstern and in her book, Time Management from the Inside Out, she talks about time mapping and the concept is the same. So let's say you would like to declutter your desk or you would like to declutter your computer the first thing you want to do is block or box out time. Um, so for example, today is September 15th and I have both on my, I, I use Google, in my Google calendar, as well as my paper planner, I have a box today, early this morning from 9 to 10 a.m. and it said Posse's easing stuff because by halfway through the month, I always get all the content for next month's easing to my assistant, Deborah, because that gives us two weeks for us to go back and forth to solidify everything I wanna put out for my October newsletter. So visually what happens when I look at my, either my Google calendar or my planner is I see that box. And that box is my permission to, when that nine to 10 block comes, I give myself an hour to process all of my papers for my content. I am a paper digital person. I have one foot in both worlds. So even though I'm digitally typing my information to Deb, I actually have a folder called Posse's Easing and everything I think about all month to do either for the next month or for the whole year goes into that folder. So 
when I'm done sending her that email, I can process the rest of the papers if I want to get rid of it. But time boxing visually is a great way to look at your calendar and know that you have provided a safe home to take care of whatever task it is. So it's a huge time management principle for me, but visually, I think it's very helpful. So if you're not used to time boxing, time blocking, time mapping, and you want to get your paper process, what you can do is think about, okay, where in my week or my month do I want to box out some time for whatever papers are bothering you? So um, I'll give you another client example. And she's usually on her call, so I don't think she would mind me sharing. But Anne, my client Anne, hired me this week to come in and help her with a filing system because during 2020, um, her and her husband spent that year basically during COVID down at their Florida property instead of up here at their New York property. And even though all the mail was forwarded to her in Florida, she just boxed it not time box, but she literally put everything in a box. And she decided that instead of processing it herself, when she came back to New York, she would call G. Marie. So we time box three hours this week so that we could go through all the papers that she had brought up from Florida. And then we went through it. I developed a master uh, index file for her. We set up everything she needed so that when her husband, who does this all the time to her, handed her papers to be filed. He is a lawyer who loves to dabble in real estate and he hands her all kinds of papers all the time and she never knew where to put them. She now knew exactly where to put the papers because we had created a filing system and the master file index, but we time boxed three hours to get that done. So that is time boxing. Can I make a comment, Jean Marie? You can. Um, just going back to your reference to send you sending me your easing content two weeks in advance. <clears throat> I wholeheartedly appreciate that because you putting that on your calendar to do ahead of time takes the stress off you and takes the stress off me because there are people that they put stress on themselves, send it last minute and say, Hey, um, can you do this for me tomorrow? <laughs> and that's stressful for everybody. So it, when you box things and you, you allow enough time for them. It just really alleviates so much of that stress in your life because it, it, it dominoes and affects other people a lot of times. Right. And, and the reason um, it takes so much stress out of your life is because when you look at your calendar visually, you know, you've set aside the time to get that task done. And then, so in our heads, we can think, I don't have to worry about that anymore because I've already, you know, bought block time on my calendar. So and with that two weeks, you have some wiggle room. If something came up, you could theoretically move it to another day. You, you've allowed that wiggle room just in case as well. Yes. Yep. Yep. And I'm a wiggle room kind of a gal, even though I'm <laughs> productive and organized, we always want to have wiggle room. Um, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm all about aiming for excellence. And I don't, if you were to look at my calendar, I'm not a bumper to bumper person. There's a little bit of white space here and there. And we, we all need that white space um, or we'll lose our We'll go insane. Okay, so I told you the two things were number one, time, and number two, making decisions. So I call this slide, side to decide. So I like to say that if we do not taff our paper and our information, it will get fat, all right? So I'm going to show you my version of TAF. So whenever you have a piece of paper, or you have a, a digital piece of information, we can say email. You have three choices in, in my mind about what to do. So now you're in your dedicated time, right? You're in your block of time that says, this is my hour to process my paperwork and process my digital information. And you look at that first piece of paper, you know, whatever it is, or that first email. So three choices are, number one, you can toss it. Okay, which might mean shred it, recycle it, uh, delete it. You know, there are still people I work with who decide to take out the garbage bag to the backyard and burn it. So for those folks who are in the country, um, but this is a very easy decision, right? Very quick. You know, you get an email that says, hey, can you come to the opening of the health barn? Well, no, I can't. Uh, if it is no, I can't, I can easily delete it, you know, um, 
But maybe you want to go to the opening of the health barn, in which case it's A for act. So you want to respond right away and you want to RSVP and you want to put it on your calendar. So that's pretty simple, right? So you can toss it or you can act on it. But now our third decision is what I referred to as the F word. This is the, the hardest one. Um, so the F word I used to say was for file. And quite often it is for file. But now I like to say F is for figure out the future follow-up. So you got a piece of paper or you got a digital piece of information. And now you have to say to yourself, well, it isn't a toss. I can't act on it right now. So I need to possibly file it, most likely. I need to give it a home, but I need to figure out the future follow-up of this piece of information. So going back to the opening of the health barn, maybe the health barn is a member of your local chamber of commerce. And you're thinking in your, you know, in my line of work as an organizer, maybe somehow I can connect and maybe I want to contribute an article on how to, you know, organize your kitchen or how to get healthier or combining something from, you know, organizing with, with being healthy. And I have a lot of that stuff in my files. So if I wanted to do something that's going to take me a little bit longer for the follow-up, I have to say to myself, okay, so my future follow-up might be, let me go to my planner. I've got to give the person in charge of it a call. I want to see if she's interested in any of my information. So it's really, you know, it's a strategic think, but after I'm done figuring out what I'm going to do, I have to say, well, where am I going to put this piece of information? Is it going to continue to live in my email box with a star? If it was something that was a physical piece of paper, am I going to give it a file? Um, so once again, those three decisions are toss, act, or figure out the future follow-up. So let's just look at the picture of this desk. And this actually isn't a client desk, so this is not one of my photos. Um, this is a, a stock photo. But if this person hired me as a professional organizer and I came into their office, my first line of thinking would be, what kind of information and paper is here? So, you know, the, the top left pile uh, looks like there's a bunch of paper stapled on the top left. Well, maybe that's a contract. So, you know, is this person able to toss this contract? Maybe, maybe not. Does this person need to act on this contract right now? And if the person says, you know, this is a current contract, I can't toss it, but I can't act on it right now. I'm with you, Jean Marie. What do we do with it? Then we have to really think, well, what is the future follow-up for this contract? So if it's active, we need to look at his time management system, whatever he's using, and we need to say, well, how long do you think it would take for you to follow up on the contract? And he might say to me, well, it's, it's actually only a two-minute two phone call or all I need is a signature. And then we make a plan in his planner or on his calendar as to when he or she is going to do that. But now we say, well, we're going to give it a home, right? So now we have a home for the time management follow-up. So we've figured out the future follow-up, but we kind of want to declutter his desk. So now maybe we have a file system that's all client contracts. Maybe we figure out um, a tickler system. So this is kind of all the stuff that happens when we talk about processing the paper. It's for the person who's doing the thinking, okay, my future follow-up is X, Y, Z. Where am I going to put it for now? So a lot of times my clients will say to me, well, Jean Marie, where should I put this? And my question always to my client is, well, where will you think to find it? You know, and I might suggest, well, why don't we do a whole file drawer of contracts? And they might say, well, I like that idea, but you know what? I'd rather have just client name folders and I can put the contracts in with the client file, you know, just everything relative to that client. So you really, you know, I think a lot when I'm working with people with their paper and the digital information. Um, because it's really important 
to take the time to talk about, well, how is this going to work? You know, what would the appropriate file system be and whether that's a paper file or a digital file? Um, so in the case where that person needed the signature, you know, is this something that we can be sending electronically and we don't need the paper copy? So you have to ask all those kinds of questions. So I'm sure you can figure out your own future follow-up if you ask yourself that question, but let's say there's billing, you know, let's say there's there's invoices um, on this person's desk, or we can take an example of uh, invoices on my desk. I have a three-tier system that I use for processing for all my accounting. So if I had a receipt laying on my desk and I wanted to declutter my desk, that would go in with the posse, you know, QuickBooks area. So I can't toss it because I need it for accounting purposes. I don't need to act on it. And my F word, my figure out the future follow-up is, you know what, I'm going to put that receipt in my three-tier organizer where I have the one section for the QuickBook accounting. And that receipt will get processed at the end of the end of the month because I always time box my month end reconciliation in QuickBooks. That's an hour box that's always there at the end of the month. And then any paper relative to processing that accounting is, is in there. Um, so I'm just kind of using examples that would be, you know, on, on somebody's desk. What if, um, what if this person had come in from taking a class and they took a continuing ed class or they took a CEU class? Now they've got this much paper from an educational point of view. So the question would be, you know, do we need a real paper home? Do we need it at all? Can we scan it? So going back to TAF, we now have an inch of paper coming in. Can this person toss it? Well, they just spent maybe good money taking a CEU class. They don't want to shred it, recycle it, or burn it. Um, but do they want to give it a physical home? Or do they want to take the time to scan it and have it digitized? And maybe they've got a folder on their computer called professional development. So figuring out the future follow-up, if that's the right thing to do, you know, might take a little, a little thought. Um, does anybody want to unmute themselves and talk about a particular kind of paper? And we can go through the TAF example. Everybody's good? Okay. All right. So my acronym, TAF, toss, act, or the F word, figure out your future follow-up. Because again, if you don't do your taffing, everything will get very fat. And just think of taff as your decluttering diet. Hey, Marie, I'll just add one comment to that. One thing I do with, you know, active paper, because if I, if it goes in the client file, it might get lost. I do have a pending file, but it only goes in the pending file if I make a um, calendar or note uh, or to do task, electronic tasks for it. So it doesn't get lost in the pending folder. And yep. then I, um, once it's acted on, I can take it out of the pending folder and either file it or toss it. So that's one strategy that I use. Yeah. Great strategy. So, you know, different clients use different need, uh, different, have different needs when it comes to active paper, active digital information. Um, you know, somebody might be A-OK -okay with a basic active file folder and it can go in there. And again, that could be digital or physical. And that's their one go-to for anything that's active right now. Somebody else like myself, you know, I'm kind of old school. I love a tickler system, which is the 43 folders with the one to 31 in the January to December. That's what I like to do for active papers. But each person is, is very different. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you systematize and consistently process it the same way. Otherwise, you're going to forget where you said something was. So that's very, very important. So, so the wrap up. So we talked about uh, in order to do a real detox, you have to set aside time. There's no way around it. And you have to make decisions. So those are the two really important things that you need to do. But I also like to encourage people to do what I call the wrap up. And if you were to look in my planner, I have a little time box every day called the wrap up. I have one a time box at the end of the week called the weekly wrap up. And then I have one at the end of the month called the monthly wrap up. And then at the end of the year, I do it automatically. 
But this is where you take 10 or 15 minutes a day to truly clear off your desk, clear your mind. So anything that was out for the day, you can think about, you know, can I put this away? Do I have to add this to my calendar? What's my future follow-up? And you kind of put yourself back in order. You know, back in the day when many of us had um, jobs that we would go to in brick and mortar buildings, you would never leave your desk area maybe looking like this because you didn't want anybody to see it. So we would all quote unquote tidy up. Not only would we tidy up, but we'd probably also strategize the next day's work so that when we came into our office the next morning, the desk was tidy and we hit our work running because we knew exactly what we were gonna do. So I see this going away kind of like the Sunday supper and I would highly encourage if you don't already do this to take it back, you know, give yourself those few minutes at the end of the day to kind of see where everything is on your work surface. Um, and I definitely recommend that whenever the end of your work week is, whether that's Friday afternoon, Sunday morning, to look at your whole week's worth of information. Maybe look at your email box, maybe look at the you know, entire desk, you know, clear out the regular mailbox and give yourself just a, you know, a little bit of time to do the wrap up. Um, okay, so I'm gonna open it up to Q&A in just a minute. Next month, our Posse's pen is what I call aging in place doesn't need to be scary uh, when you're organized and decluttered. I had recently been asked to present to the Tenafly Senior Center, and I said to the director, what would you like? And she said, can you please do a lot of our folks are not downsizing, they're not moving, and they want to stay in their homes. So can you do an aging in place? And I said, sure. So it's really all about decluttering when you're not going anywhere. So be on the lookout for that. That's how to register. And it's always in the follow-up email to Posse's pen, as well as my e-zine. So that's next month. And then, of course, I would love to stay in touch with you. So if you have any questions at the end, uh, just give me a phone call, give shout, you know, give me an give me an email. And um, Deb, if you want to put this information in the chat box as well. And I am going to stop sharing and open this up to Q and A. So our theme is paper or digital detox. So now is the time to ask all your hard core questions. So if Marilyn or Betty, you have any questions, unmute yourself. And if you don't, it means I either did a really good or a really bad job. <laughs> you did a great job as always. All right, so that hey, office Betty. that you showed, mine looks like that upstairs. So if you've delayed it and delayed it for the last few years, yep. how do you get going and organize it the way you said? Do you start pulling things apart by year? Like, how do okay. you do it? Super <laughs> question. So I would say you could do it one of two ways, because again, it's all about time and it's all about making decisions. So if it's too overwhelming and it's literally years worth of accumulation, you might want to say, you know what, I'm going to start off with 30 minutes a day, Monday to Friday, depending on your own energy level. You might say, you know what, I'm too busy during the week. I'm going to do one hour on Saturday and one hour on Sunday. I'm going to give myself two hours a weekend. So you might want to, from a time management perspective, figure out how am I going to chunk it down in order to get it done. Then whenever you have time boxed, this particular task on your calendar and you go up there, you could attack it again, one of two ways. You could literally touch the first thing and say, am I tossing it? Am I acting on it real quick? Or am I figuring out a future follow-up? Or, because I, I haven't seen it. If there's that much accumulation, you might want to categorize first. So what I mean by that is don't make the decisions yet. Don't take the time to make the decisions, just sort. Like this is insurance, this is medical, this is investment, this is uh, electronics and just get everything unmingled, pull it apart. So when you look at the piles, you know, okay, that's personal information, that's financial information. 
And then when the room is unmingled, you, and you're still time boxing, you go back to one pile, let's, I'll use the medical pile as an example, and you'll say, oh, this is an EOB from 2018. I'm gonna decide that the only EOBs I'm keeping would be from this year, in case I have any question. You know, and then you go over to, this is a financial investment. I'm gonna decide, you know, based on my taxes, that I'm gonna keep these papers for X amount of time. And are they gonna have a physical home? Are they gonna have a digital home? And so again, you're tapping. You're, now that you've categorized, you're saying, is it a toss? Is it an act? Maybe it's an EOB from this year. And you're like, oh, wait, I, I, they're pro oh, they think they're gonna charge me for that? They're not gonna charge me for that. I'm gonna, I need to make a phone call. So I need to put that in my planner. You know, I need to call yeah. Blue Cross and Blue Shield or whatever. Um, so you're taffing those separate categories. All right. That gives me a good start this weekend, even. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That was a good question. It was a very good question. All right. We have like three minutes. <laughs> Any other questions? No, you did a great job. Go. Oh, yay. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, then I think we will end the call and I hope to see you next month for mm -hmm. um, I like to no, no scary decluttering and aging in place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. everybody. Thanks. Anything else, today. Deb? We're good, right? Thank you. Okay. All right. See you all soon. Remember, if you want to see more organizing and productivity videos created by Posse, hit the subscribe button and you'll be alerted when the next one is ready.